This was just last summer, back before the quarantine when life was far more normal. It was a late night in April, and I had taken my girlfriend out on a date. We were north of Settle Ford's conservation area in Missouri, the only area that I can really remember at the time. We were just driving around, BSing and talking. I had an idea at my sleeve to have an even better evening, since my girlfriend and I had been talking about wanting to have some fun. I pulled over to the side of the road, and out of my jacket pocket, I reached in and pulled out this gnarly joint my friends and I had wrapped days prior. I had planned this for a little bit. My girlfriend was surprised, but only had smoked a few times before. Before we even got the joint lit up, we were looking for a lighter, and I thought I had stuck it in my center console. When my girlfriend says, Uh oh babe, put the joint away now, cops here. I look up in the rearview mirror, and I see what looks like somebody approaching my car. Far enough away at the time that it looked just like a person, but as I watched this figure approach my car, something just didn't quite sit right with me. If this was a cop, where was their car? Why were they just randomly approaching the back end of my vehicle? Then I panicked and realized it's probably a park service employee about to bust us. But then I started to see more of its shape. It was dark outside, so keep in mind that until the shape got closer, I couldn't really have a great view. Then I saw the ears, the perky, upright dog ears, and what I thought to be a person looked massive and wide in the chest, like some sort of freakish bodybuilder. Something in my stomach and the very pit of it just told me that there's something wrong here. I had all these thoughts within about five seconds as my eyes locked onto this approaching figure that walked ever so slowly on two legs toward the back of my car. My girlfriend was watching me at the time getting really nervous, asking me what's wrong. I asked her, look behind us and tell me what the hell is that? She turns around at the same time and we both start screaming. Right in this moment, the figure walking towards our car begins to drop down on all fours like some kind of animal and begins running towards our car faster. I throw the key into the ignition, not wasting a second, put the car in drive, bam, and we're out of there just like that. It's hard for me to put into words what exactly it is that I saw. It was a large silhouette for the most part that closely resembled some kind of creature, I guess. I don't even want to use that word. It sounds too fictional. Whatever it was, I could tell you it was not human. I'm not a person who makes up stories for fun, and I have nothing to gain from making this up. Plus, my girlfriend was with me, so she can verify that my story is correct. I don't know if there's such a thing as aliens, or if that's what this was, but when it dropped on all fours like an animal, that's when I really freaked. I mean, I will still drive by that area to this day, and just the memory of that coming back to me still gives me the chills. Now, when I do a date night with my girl, I don't try and pull off any desolate roads anymore, especially like that, next to a marshland. Has this experience changed my belief in monsters or things that aren't human? Not really. Even though I can't explain what happened to me, it's not enough to hit me over the edge into believing things like ghosts or anything of that. I just consider it an off-the-cuff experience, and I leave it in the past. At the time of this sighting, the only really lighting we had was what little moonlight there was outside. And where this figure was coming from, it was just a lone road. Whatever it was must have come out of the marsh and followed the road towards our car. I mean, my car was still on, the interior light was on, and I had my brake lights on. So maybe it was attracted to the lights. I'm not exactly sure, or if it even was an animal. But then again, they always say trust your gut instinct. And my gut instinct in that situation was saying bad, 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 get away. It's pretty clear that my girlfriend felt the same way, especially when she started screaming and yelling at me to drive. I felt like if I would have hesitated and stayed there even longer, well, who knows what would have happened. I wasn't in any rush to find out. 
The jungles of Vietnam held all sorts of freakish things that the soldiers opposing the Vietnamese military had to face. I'm sure you are well aware of many of the things, assuming you've spent any time at all hearing some of the things that went on during that war, but I bet you didn't know about some of the chilling true stories told by some soldiers about large canid creatures stalking the jungles at night, killing Vietnamese and US soldiers alike. There's all sorts of tunnels that were dug underground, for example. Some dug by animals, others dug by Vietnamese to store things and to create traps for opposing soldiers, which this was actually quite common. But there were also tunnels dug by these creatures. There have been reports of at least one half platoon that discovered one of these tunnels later on during the nighttime, hunting down potential Vietnamese soldiers that had fled from a nearby captured village. What they found was a series of tunnels that spanned about 30 feet below the ground with an average width of around 9 to 10 feet and a height of around 14 feet. These tunnels were substantially large. They continued to lead deep underneath the earth and were even interconnected. That's before several of these soldiers were attacked by these large jungle wolves, they call them. The Vietnamese even had a word for them which directly translated to jungle dogmen. They knew about them and even coexisted with them, just like they did all the other creatures of the jungle that posed an imminent threat to man. It was commonplace for these creatures to ascend out of these large tunnels at nighttime and hunt, which is when combat troops would come into contact with these same creatures. These things were reported to the US soldiers after they saw significant Vietnamese soldiers being ripped into pieces. In these tunnels, they had already found several corpses stashed away in sections of the tunnels of US soldiers and Vietnamese, and villagers. Although depictions and descriptions of these beings were hard to come by, they were known to many of the local villagers as beings that just inhabited parts of the jungle. These beings would also stalk and kill other large predators, like big cats, monkeys, and whatever meat they can get their hands on. Remember that there are so many components to the Vietnam War, such as torture, famine, destruction, death, that because of that, it's hard to encompass such a bizarre abstract concept such as what I'm telling you. With so many distracting details and so many things wiped clean and hidden over the years, it takes a while and you have to talk to the right people before you can uncover the true details of things that really went on. Many true accounts and sightings lost to time and dead soldiers. But if you're adamant and you do the right digging, you can find all the information you need from all the right people. I'm not exactly comfortable giving away my identity, but I do have a few close relatives who served in the Vietnam War. On my side, as well as my wife's side, both US and Vietnamese. Once I relate to these people how I have an interest in cryptids, and have shared with them some of the interesting information I know, well, that's all it took to spark the conversation. And don't think these kinds of creatures were all they had out in the jungles. There were all sorts of nightmares waiting the US soldiers. I'm sure I can spend an entire afternoon sitting down with a pen and paper jotting down all the stories and accounts these relatives of mine have to tell me. Yes, the times of war and destruction were absolutely terrible, and both sides of people faced horrendous acts of violence done against them in the name of war. Even with that being the main focus of the entire event, it's pretty rare that you even hear about some of the traps set by the Vietnamese for the soldiers. I'm just using that as an example to show that many of the minor details such as the accounts I'm telling you have gotten washed away in time and forgotten about over the blanket of more relevant details. I couldn't exactly find which parts of Vietnam that these creatures were segregated to because I know that out of all the accounts I heard with different things, not just these creatures, only a small segment had accounts of these particular creatures. And only a small segment of accounts that I've heard deal with these creatures in the tunnels. From what I've gathered, especially from some of my Vietnamese relatives, is that they were about as tall as a man, which means for them, about five to six feet in height, and very wild looking. They basically refer to them as wild beasts of the jungle. And although they weren't always necessarily hostile, they typically acted very aggressive and territorial. I try and look at the whole thing from a very scientific perspective. It's very possible that there might be canid humanoid beings, 
but they're not these creepy pasta, violent werewolf types of monsters that a lot of stories paint them out to be, at least to my beliefs. And from the accounts I've gathered, at least from my Vietnamese relatives, it seemed to be about the same thing. That's why I use the term coexisted. They seem to treat these beings as any other large alpha predator of the jungle. You avoid them and respect them. If you find yourself at the wrong area at the wrong time, well, you might be a victim. These relatives of mine are far into their 80s and 90s and have absolutely nothing to gain from making this stuff up. I have grown very close to my wife's side of the family and so gathering this type of information due to good relationships wasn't hard to do. But it just goes to show you, if you don't go digging for these lost details of a bloody war, then they'll be forgotten about forever, once many who saw the war pass away, forever gone. This is why it's so important for us scientists out there studying things that science doesn't necessarily recognize. We have to go the extra mile and dig even deeper to find the answers we seek. Long ago, back in the late 90s, I had acquired this old property with a big worn down barn on it through a short sale and the house itself was in need of much work, a little dilapidated to say the least. Little did I know there was a good reason that this property had long been forgotten about. The property itself was not in terrible shape but to my knowledge, there had not really been any people living on it for years. I guess that was kind of evident due to its condition. This place was actually on the outskirts of the town that I lived in, and since I'd been coming out there regularly to make this place look nice, I was planning on fixing it up and probably trying to resell it for some profit. For the record, I am a 52 year old male and have never been involved with any sort of strange activity, until this anyway. Every time I was near the back side of this house where the barn was, I would get this bad feeling, like it was impending doom. I would hear things in the bushes and in the trees at night when I was on the porch, and I would just kind of stop when I got closer to investigate. I would sometimes hear what sounded like a really large dog sniffing the air. It was bizarre. I would never go outside in certain areas because I would feel like there's somebody there, some sort of presence that would be watching every step that I was making. I knew there was more to it than that though, because there had been strange noises and activity around that area long before I ever acquired the piece of land with the dilapidated house and barn on it. I've heard multiple stories of people and neighbors in the area about weird things going on, but I really never paid attention to such hogwash. Of course, until I myself actually experienced it there. One evening, I was working late on the back porch, and it got really bad. You know that primal instinct of fear? How when it just washes over you, it grabs you, it takes hold of you. I had this horrible feeling creep up all around me. I don't have any other answer for it, but the closest I can tell you is that the thought of I'm being hunted right now by something kept popping up into my head. I felt like I was in danger and I needed to leave. I had stepped inside the house to grab some more tools and I think I just left the door open for maybe five minutes while I was in there. I don't know what it was but I began to hear something big moving towards and closer to the house, like a really big animal or something. I did hear the distinct sound of something big running from the brush towards the house that I don't know where it came from exactly but it was coming toward where I was, just walked by the back door. I didn't know what it was or what it was planning, but it didn't feel right. I remember stopping and turning towards the door, expecting whatever was going to barge right through the open doorway. I never had fear overtake me like that, ever. Not like it did in that moment. I almost felt like I had to do my best not to have a literal mental breakdown right then and there. It sounded like a damn moose charged out of the bush toward the porch, and then all noise ceased. Every single one. I sat there listening with my hands still on my tools, listening for anything. The crickets had even gone quiet. It was total silence. I heard a very faint raspy breathing, very heavy. Not like a person, 
but something with a very heavy and large set of lungs. Whatever it was, it felt like it was waiting for me to step back out on the porch where I was drilling and nailing. I fled out the front door as quickly and quietly as I could, jumping in my truck and getting out of Dodge quickly. It was weeks before I even felt comfortable returning back to the property that I had just recently acquired. In the coming weeks after that incident, I had horrible nightmares of this wolf creature breaking in the house, grabbing me, and pulling me away into the woods, never to be seen again. And then, my nightmare would end. It was the same one, reoccurring over and over every night. This creature in my nightmares resembled some hideous, upright walking wolf creature. I guess you would call that a werewolf. The sheer amount of noise it made from running over the brush to the house. The weight that it had. I knew this was a large animal. It terrified me enough that I had a hard time returning. Anyway, when I finally did return, I did it in the morning hours that were filled with visibility and daylight. The outside of the house reeked like dog urine, really strong. It was in that moment I realized my nightmares were coming to life. I just remember thinking that this can't be possible. How is it I've been having these lucid nightmares of this werewolf type creature and now I'm smelling a strong dog urine all around the house? Like this creature came out of the woods and has now marked this house as its property, its territory. It freaked me out far too much to want to continue to work on this piece of land like I had been. So I hired a small three man crew to go out there and finish the work for me for the next couple of months. I would periodically check up on them asked them if they felt anything weird while they were working, and they would just give me weird looks and tell me no. Clearly, they had no idea what I was talking about. This put me on edge even more. I felt like whatever I had encountered that night was targeting me as an individual. It wanted me, whatever it was. It wasn't interested in these younger guys I had hired, nor the house. It was waiting for me to come back to show itself or so I believe. It isn't going to give it the benefit of the satisfaction of terrorizing me. I think I came to terms with my nightmares being a reality, that this thing was real and was terrorizing me in my dreams. I ended up selling the place shortly after I got them to finish up on the house and cut things short, in turn taking a much smaller profit. But I didn't want to deal with it anymore, if we're entirely honest. Afterward, I never had any of these nightmares again, never felt any of the strange and terrifying sensations I did when I first stepped foot on that place. That was nearly 20 years ago, and I want to keep those memories as far in the past as I can keep them. Thanks for listening. Before I go into detail, let me explain a little bit about the area so you can fully understand how this happened. My grandfather's corn stalks lined right up against the road that ran parallel with his corn. On the other side of that road, there is a road that meets and intersects perpendicular that ran right into the parallel road. On one side of this perpendicular road was corn stalks that were owned by another family, and then on the other side of that road was heavier woods. Here, just think of an upside down capital T. The flat part of the T was my grandfather's corn stalks. On one side was the last woods, and on the other was the corn. I'm just trying to give you a visual that makes the most sense. Now, when I was really little, my grandfather owned acres and acres of a cornfield that I would play in all the time. One afternoon, I was stopping to look at a big bug that I had never seen before, while my grandfather was pulling a trailer with all of his corn stalks and grain in it. I noticed some movement coming from across the road and I turned to see what it was. My grandfather saw it too, since he was right there, and motioned to me that he thought it was going to be a big buck and what emerged from the woods across the road. He pointed to where the movement was, and that's when we saw this large hyena-looking creature that was walking around on its hind legs, emerging out of the woodline. When I saw it, it turned its head and met my eyes. Then, it leapt and jumped and landed into the corn stalks on the opposite side of the road. In one jump, it cleared the road. 
as it had leapt into the cornfield on the other side. I panicked. I jumped up onto the trailer, and I waved my arms trying to get my granddad's attention, who looked and saw it too. Then, the creature emerged from the corn again. It stopped, looked back at me, then it turned to the side and walked off on its hind legs, going back into the woods where it just came from, instead of leaping like it did before. It looked like it was holding a small animal in its arms. Perhaps it had chased a cat or something into the corn and was retrieving it when we had just happened to be right across the road from it. This thing didn't take long to cross from one area of the corn to the woods. I knew it was out there in the open, exposing itself. It was smart. It acted intelligently. I had never seen a creature like that before in my life. Gosh, it was so giant. I've never seen an animal so large before, other than large bear and moose, especially one that was walking on its hind legs, just like a person does. It didn't act awkward or uncomfortable walking on its hind legs. It was like it was fluid and natural. I can't overstate to you how massive this creature was. When I saw it for the first time coming out of the woods into the corn, I saw that it was well over eight feet tall and had a long muzzle covered in black. My grandfather is 6'4", and this thing towered over him. I could just tell from being how far away it was from it. I felt traumatized. I know that even if it took me a couple of years to get over this experience, I would really never truly be the same again. I was terrified. I haven't gotten over this since the day, and haven't fully processed it, even all these years later. My grandfather who saw it wouldn't talk to me about it, and he just sits in complete denial that these things exist. I don't need to see one to believe them anymore. I know they exist now. Driving home one afternoon from a dentist appointment when I decided to take a long way home to head through a backcountry area that's primarily all old native territory. There wasn't much back here, truth to be told, but the scenery was beautiful. That's when I had the sighting of my life happen to me. I almost hit a big black dog. I saw this figure run in front of my car. It was running upright, just like a person, and looked just like a werewolf. I stopped the car and just sat there gaping at it as it ran across the road quickly. I never did see something like that before in my life. I slowly started to move again after it crossed when I got about 300 yards away from where it crossed. I could see in my rearview mirror that it was looking back and peering its head back out at my vehicle. That dog was huge. It was nearly eight feet tall, had pointed ears, a long snout, and a huge chest. When it crossed and jumped down the embankment on the road, it let out a growl unlike any I've ever heard. I could feel the vibrations in my body. It was so intimidating. I couldn't stop thinking about this sighting until I reached my house. I told my husband about what had happened, and he told me to never go through that area again, that it was supposed to be a cursed place of dark magic, and that people have gone missing after going to that area. Lots of strange things have gone on in that area besides just missing persons. Weird loud metallic banging sounds, bright lights at night, figures moving in the sky in the woods. I guess that entire area is a hotbed for UFO sightings and encounters, among even Bigfoot sightings I guess. My husband, who has grown up here in the area, where I haven't been growing up here, him and his friends avoided that area like the plague because people he knew went through there and turned out missing. Even many of the natives that live around here don't venture through that area much. Just kind of makes you wonder. I probably should have never driven through there, but oh well. I'm kind of glad I did, because had I not, I would have not seen such a marvel of an animal, if you could even call it that. Personally, I don't believe in werewolves or creatures like Bigfoot, but I do believe that there are monsters out there. In fact, I have a story that I could share with you in which I have an experience with a monster all of my own. It was one night when I was left home by myself playing video games while my parents were out 
and a monster, what I would believe to be a monster, tried to break into my house. I used the term monster because that's the only way I know how to accurately describe the way it looked and its behavior. In reality, it closely resembled that of a werewolf, but I try to be logical about it and I realize that werewolves aren't necessarily real. I personally don't believe that there are people turning into these things under a full moon, but I cannot deny that the thing that I saw that night, that thing, a monster, was most certainly real and had it gotten into my house like it wanted to, there is no telling if I would still be here today to tell you my story. All around our house we had a yard, and then beyond that, on both sides and the back, was probably about three acres of small woods, which then led directly to a neighbor's house. Directly in front of the house was the driveway that led to the road, and on the other side of the road were tall hedges. Had we not had as much privacy, and maybe were closer to the neighbors, just maybe this wouldn't have happened. Anyway. This happened to me when I was 15 and still in high school. I was a freshman, so I believe I was either 14 or 15 actually. My parents went out for a date night, and when they did, they usually did not get back until super late, like after midnight. So I was left at home to play video games and watch TV. You know, stuff that typical teenagers do. Since my parents have a large screen TV in the living room, I think I hooked up my PS3 and was playing games through that. I'll give you a quick layout of our house. As soon as you walk in the front door, the TV is directly to your right, facing your left. To your left is the couch, which faces the TV, and there's a large window perpendicular to the front door. From the outside, if you were to look in this front window, you have full view of the living room, as well as the dining area, which sits back behind the living room. If you're in the living room, and you walk past the TV, you can go right down the small hallway, which leads to my parents' room, and a small bathroom, and my father's office. If you turn left, and go down that way, you go down another small hallway, which leads to my bedroom, and a small bathroom. The bedroom is on the other side of the living room. So if I'm in my bedroom, and I was facing where the TV is in the living room, there's a wall there. Going back to the living room, as soon as you walk in the front door, directly in front of you is the dining room, and in the kitchen curves inward, blocked by a wall. Now that you kind of know what the house is like, this is what happened. I stopped playing games and I quickly got up to go get a drink of water, and as I'm walking back from the kitchen, I notice something I didn't before. I see big red eyes peering at me through the window at night. When I saw those eyes, I just lost it. I turned around and I ran, and I locked myself in my bedroom. I was freaking out. I felt like a little kid who had just seen a monster outside. When I went inside though, I started looking through the blinds just a little bit. I didn't want to move the blinds that much because I knew that it knew where I was, so I didn't want to move the window blinds. Then I saw it again. This time, it followed the movement. It followed me to where my bedroom was and it noticed that I had gone into the next bedroom over and moved over in the front of my window. Because of its big silhouette, this thing must have been around 7 to 8 feet tall. It had a long tail which curled up behind it. I really couldn't believe what I was looking at. I thought to myself it was a werewolf even before I saw it in full. The shape gave it away. Crappy for me, but I had broken my window blinds months ago by rustling too much with my friends, and I hit it, and my parents never bothered to replace it because they were mad, so they didn't close quite all the way, which meant that this thing had free reign to fully look into my windows right at me, and there was virtually nothing I can do but try and hide out of the way in the corner. I had my light off, and I was hiding in the corner while this thing scanned my room, looking for me. I really couldn't believe what I was looking at. I thought it was a werewolf even before I saw it in full, just by its silhouette alone. The head and its mane looked just like a werewolf you would see. It looked to be huge, and it stood upright on two legs. It was covered in long dark fur, almost like a matted fur, and it had pointed ears just like a dog does. The eyes glowed red, 
like a deep dull red, and even had a hint of yellow. Its face was what really confused me, because the way it looked totally defied understanding. It leaned in so close to the glass that you could see its breath on the window and the condensation building up. I don't think it could see me, because I turned my light off, but after a few moments, it pulled its head back and walked around to the other side of my house. This thing was heavy, and you could tell that it weighed a lot, because every time it took a step, you could just hear this dull thud on the ground. I jumped up quickly, locked my door, and ran back and sat in the corner, listening intently for whatever this thing was going to do next. I could faintly hear my game, which was paused, and then it was silent for a moment. I kept listening and listening, and then, that's when I heard the back sliding glass door rattling. To my horror, this thing was trying to open the sliding glass door to get in the house. It was shaking it harder and harder, more and more violent each time. I began to cry I was so scared. I left my phone out in the living room, so I had nothing I could do, nobody I could reach out to or call. I didn't know what to do. At the time, it was maybe 9.45 p.m., and my parents wouldn't be home for a few more hours. I had no way to contact anybody, nothing I could do. If this thing broke into the house, I was a goner. It tried and tried at the door for a while before just stopping entirely. I didn't hear anything anymore after that. I didn't even hear it walk away like I could hear it walk all the way around the house. I still heard my game, which was just a fainted noise, but it was still sitting there paused, just like I had left it. I decided I was just going to sit there and wait until my parents got back. I didn't know how long it was, but eventually, my mother and father came home. It was only around 11 p.m., but felt like I had been sitting there waiting for hours. They got back because my mother has this habit of coming down with terrible migraines, and she wanted to cut their date shorter. When my mother and father came home, my mother got some aspirin and they were both wondering why I had locked myself in my bedroom with the lights off when I told them that I thought I heard an intruder trying to break into the house. My father looked at me very strangely and investigated the back door where I told him that I had heard somebody trying to break in, but there was no signs, no footprints or smudges on the glass. It's like I just hallucinated the whole thing. I know what I saw and I know what I experienced. I am no fool and I wouldn't dare tell my parents this because they would never believe me. Now, fast forward in time, I'm in my 20s and currently enrolled in college, and that is still one of the most horrific things. I didn't believe in monsters before that, but I do now, and I know for fact they are real. My mother used to have a massive rose garden when I was a little kid. That was up in central Maine. It always seemed like it was in full bloom, and every spring I would go out and see how the roses looked. However, I think the rose garden attracted something evil. My mom would talk about seeing this strange black dog walking around her garden during the night. She said it would stand up on its hind legs and press its face against the windows of the house on the bottom floor. That's where our kitchen and living room was. Then it would run off and vanish. She described it as a strange looking creature. However, it didn't really seem to scare her as it did just make her a lot more alert of what was going on around her. However, one night at around three in the morning, my mother is a total night owl. She said she was laying in bed flipping through the late night infomercials on TV and saw what she initially thought was a man sitting on the roof of her garden shed. She said it had a large dog head, pointed ears, and a long muzzle. She also said it had paws with fingers. The entire time she was talking about this being on the roof, she kept repeating how tall this thing was. Six feet? Seven feet? She really couldn't explain it any other way. Then. The very following day was when my mom had a horrifying experience with three of these dogmen. They approached her while she was working in her garden and said that she thought they were werewolves. 
She knew without a doubt that these were the same creatures that she saw sitting on her garden shed roof and the same creatures trying to look into our first story windows. She was so frightened by these horrid creatures approaching, she ran inside and locked the door. I was at school during this time, so I have no recollection of the event. She waited for them to leave. She talked about this days prior. Night and day she would hear these strange, unidentifiable noises coming from the wooded area behind the shed. This is where she believed these creatures were coming from. The sounds these creatures would make, we believed these were communicating to each other. It was like a clicking noise. They were not human-like at all, but had a guttural quality to them, and the sound was like they were talking to each other, definitely communicating to each other in some way. Over the years, she has heard them multiple times, but never saw them again after that last time, when the three of them came out of the woods behind the shed and approached her in the, her garden. This was years and years ago, and now later in life, she has started hearing strange howls and guttural sounds again, very distinctive sounding. It's making her want to run away for good. I have had three separate dogman experiences in which I will share with you. I saw a dogman one time when I was driving out near the border of Florida State. I was 18 at the time, just got my license very shortly before this. It was late at night and eating on a carcass of a dead cow. I saw this thing looking over at me once I passed it, and then it jumped off the road and disappeared into the weeds and trees. That was my very first encounter with one of these creatures. The second encounter I had was when I was about 23 years oldish, laying in my bed, drifting off to sleep, when all of a sudden my room got really dark. I had my blinds open and my head was against the wall right underneath my window. Something really big stood in front of my window to block the light coming through. And in that very moment, I turned around and saw this hideous creature that stood on the other side of my window. It was like a really tall dog on steroids and it kind of looked human-like. Its head was large and its eyes glowed a dull red. Then it growled a deep vibration, like a bell that went off in my chest. I knew this thing had to be some sort of massive alpha predator or something. It didn't see me because the angle I was laying at, but I laid there frozen in panic. I somehow mustered the courage to reach up quickly and shut my window blinds without even looking. It was still standing there when I did this. I don't even know if it saw me or not as I quickly reached up and shut my blinds, but I heard it making this weird clicking noise and felt like it was planning a way to get into my house. Somehow or another, I managed to fall back asleep after a long while and not hearing anything anymore. I felt a false sense of security with my blinds down. It was probably a couple of hours before I could shut my brain back off from sheer exhaustion and fear. The last and final dogman encounter I had was just last year. This creature ran across the road that I live on and I was near a long dirt road that goes out into the back country. I was driving that night and I had to pull over and take a piss. Got back in my truck and began to pull out when I saw this creature. It was on its hind legs and was grasping onto this fallen tree right off the road. The area that opened up to this small section of woods around was about six feet wide. It looked kind of silly pulling itself up on its hind legs, but once I got a good look, I realized what it was. I backed up slowly and it seemed like it was sizing my truck up and staring at me. I maintained my composure and kept my foot on the brake. This thing is massive and it felt like I was being watched very closely, like this thing could be very calculated in its next move. I tried flashing my brights at it to distract it, which just seemed to piss the thing off more than it already was. Deciding I shouldn't make a fool of myself, I whipped out of there and flew down the road. Fortunately for me, this thing wasn't following me or on my tail that I could see. Anyway, those are my encounters. I'm sorry they're not more in depth, but that's about all that happened. No one can tell me dogmen don't exist because I know they're real. They are real creatures that are out there. You just gotta be mindful of them and avoid them at all costs.
I work really long shifts at my job and have to get up super early in the morning, like three or four. Because of this, my wife and I have to try and plan extra early for date nights because I sleep so early. This evening in particular, we were coming back from town when I decided to pull over, and we just sat there and talked about things in our relationship for a long while. I told her I was starting to get really tired, and hopefully she didn't mind if I took a quick cat nap. She said that was fine, and I figured it would be better before we headed back to my father's house. I passed out, and my wife sat there on her phone, hand on mine, kind of cuddling while I slept. Then, my wife saw this big dog creature cross the road late at night. At the time, we were borrowing my dad's F-150 because my truck was currently having its alternator worked on. His truck was parked off the road just a little bit away from the house. My wife said it had red eyes and a long muzzle. She said it was kind of hunched down and dragging its feet. She got a good look at it. She wakes me up immediately and tells me she just saw this thing go across the road into a big, empty field. She says that she has never seen anything like it before, and she doesn't believe in dogmen. I have only ever heard of them, but she seemed very genuinely terrified at what she saw. She told me it didn't notice her truck, or us sitting in it, but it really freaked her out. We immediately drove back home, which was close by. This is where my wife finally was able to recant her experience to my dad, but he did not believe her and thought we were seeing things, or she was seeing things. The dark plays tricks on your eyes, he says, but I believe her 100%. It's crazy, because my wife is a firm skeptic of anything out of the ordinary. So, for her to be so genuinely scared of what she saw makes me believe a little differently. The next morning, she brings out a detailed sketch of what this thing looked like. By the way, my wife is a very detailed and incredible artist, and I still find her sketch hard to accept. What I find most shocking is the fact that none of us have ever seen an animal out there like this before. The creature she drew had no tail, long back legs, and the entire body was covered in fur. The thing looked like a dog or a wolf with a human-like head and face. Not a full canine or human face, but more like the appearance of a dog or wolf with a human's matted fur and deep-set eyes, if that makes sense. She showed me and my father and told us this is what she saw. She stayed up late last night drawing this because she was so bothered by it. The sketch disturbs me, but again, my father just thinks she had a bad nightmare or saw something in the dark and refuses to believe any of it. This happened to me back when I was 17. I went on a hike with my friend about four and a half miles down a dirt road near the very end where there is a large undeveloped cul-de-sac. My friend jolts suddenly and starts panicking, saying, what is that? I kept telling him, you're just tripping out. He kept trying to stop me and would whisper to me that there's something watching us. I told him to stop thinking he was just trying to spook me, but he was really getting freaked out. This friend of mine is a big tough guy that's not really afraid of nothing, so it was strange, but I found it more annoying at the time than anything else, to be honest with you. After walking for about 10 minutes longer, I heard huge branches crashing and breaking near us. That's when I started to become frightened and we decided to turn back. While walking back, I could tell that something was following us. We were both terrified. Suddenly, after a minute of calm, this creature leapt out behind us about 50 feet away and stared us down. We both took off running back down this road that led up to where there's a turn in the road. This massive eight foot tall wolf monstrosity just came out of nowhere. It didn't chase us, but me and my friend kept looking back to make sure that it wasn't following or coming after us. It just watched us. 
It looked like a werewolf right out of a movie. It was tall and very dark in color. It had long hair, long ears, and a long snout. I don't remember seeing any eyes or teeth or any of that stuff. I was so scared that I probably blurred a lot of that out anyway. We made it back up the road and my one friend had urinated all over himself. <laughs> it was funny in a way, but we were so scared that neither of us were laughing. He never talked about that day ever again, and I don't think we told anybody else. Who would believe us anyway? I was alone in the woods with my dog one day, just listening to Spotify, admiring the beauty in the trees. I and my dog decided to go have a look around for any cool pine cones or even arrowheads. You never know what you can find when you're out in the woods alone. My favorite is finding bones of animals, skulls, ribs, anything I can collect. I was in this huge backlot area to this large apartment complex that stretches way out and there's a segment of woods, a very large segment that goes on and on. For how long, I'm not sure. I was walking around this back lot and was about to head down further to look at more cool stuff when I began to hear sticks breaking in the tree line down further from me, about 30 feet away. I turned around and looked in the direction that the sound was coming from, and then I saw some huge branches and brush moving. I could clearly see something really big was behind the tree and in the brush next to the tree moving it. The grass and weeds that were right beside the tree line were also shaking violently, as if something was rattling around in them. It freaked me out honestly, so I decided the time to hastily head back the way I came, out of there, quickly. I'm walking back, and the rattling and rustling is going crazy in the bushes, and my dog is now terrified and was whimpering. As I'm walking quickly back, I'm looking down and I make a very unnerving discovery. I did indeed find tracks. Since I did not come in this way, I never saw them originally. Two sets of tracks, both very large tracks that I found were much farther apart than the first set and were only about 20 feet apart in total. The tracks were huge canine tracks and they switched back and forth from four tracks to two, meaning that they were walking bipedally for at least half the time that they appeared on the ground. Both sets of the tracks were like this, and they both led directly to where I was hearing the shaking, and they led right in that direction of trees. I'm not about to get eaten by a large ravenous wolf. No thanks. I went hiking out in Southern California last summer and I saw this thing that looked like some kind of wolf or big German shepherd. I never saw one before, but I hear them sometimes around here. I have heard people refer to them as wolf head men because they have this wolf-like head. I don't know if that's actually what they're called, but my family and friends call them that. Most of my family knows about them and has seen them tons of times. In fact, I even heard some howling just before sunset a few weeks back near a cabin that I frequently visit with some friends. I've heard plenty more howling since then though. They seem like they're all over the area I live in. I try to stay out of specific wooded areas around me and here as much as I can, but I always feel like they're around me, like maybe there's a large pack of them. I hear them at night sometimes, howling really loud. It reminds me of wolf howls that you hear in the woods, except these howls sounded much deeper and louder. You can tell the volume alone that it came from a bigger animal. Much larger lungs, guttural, a much deeper growl. They are very disturbing howls. I fear it will show itself more and more the longer it hangs around in the area. They get braver, like most animals do. Take a cougar, for example. They hunt until all the food is gone. Then they come into contact with humans in search of more, and they get brave. Then they start attacking people. Anyway, 
I come from a small town where everybody knows each other, so my reputation is a big deal. I don't think I'm ready to publicly speak out about it. Even my family keeps it incognito, but they're bad in this area. People think I'm crazy, but I'm not. I know I'm not crazy. I do know there is something strange in the woods, and I'm not going to be afraid of it. If I'm just going to avoid going to certain spots in the woods where these things live, I certainly don't want it to run into such creatures being out there, and you can't tell me that they're not around. In fact, one time my friend was telling me about how he saw one of these things walking up near his place just outside of Santa Barbara up in the hills. He took me to his house. It was a newer house that he had just bought, and the spot where he saw this thing about a week after he originally saw it. I don't know if he's told anybody else about this, but I believe him. He told me when he saw this thing, walking up on his property, he went out to see if he could track it down. He probably could track it maybe 50 feet up a steep rocky hill, but then he heard this loud howl and a smell accompanied it by rotting meat. He thought it might have been an overly large coyote or dog, but when he got closer, the tracks turned and walked off into the forest bipedally where he couldn't track it anymore. I don't know if it was the right call for him to try and track it down, but maybe he was curious. I thought he was crazy for it and should have stayed away in case it was close by. When he described the howl to me that he had heard, it kind of wigged me out because it was the same howl that I had heard, down to the T of the description of it. He talked about how loud and ear-shattering it sounded. A lot of people stay pretty hush-hush about this kind of thing. They might be scared as of what they hear, but they're more terrified of what they don't know is going on. The area in which I live and he lives isn't far apart, but it's pretty densely populated around here. But I seriously doubt that my family and friends are the only ones around here hearing these things, these howls, these noises, and seeing these things. We have to do something quickly before these things start coming out into the public. There's an area beyond my house that has a ton of old deer stands. I've never seen anybody hunt back there, ever. It's got an eerie feel to it. Every time I've ever wandered back there, I get the creeps and I just imagine a big predator walking around back there. People being afraid to go out at night back there because they're going to get snatched. Maybe that's just my inner horror movie talking. Well, originally until my thoughts became a literal nightmare. I used to think I was just overly afraid because I had watched too many horror movies. And then I saw the largest upright walking coyote that I've ever seen. It was massive and I could see the tops of its ears over its head. It was radiating that horrid yellow glow from its eyes. I honestly thought it was some sort of werewolf or wolfman to me until I saw it in full view in the open eating the deer. It's hard to comprehend what it was exactly, but I can tell you that whatever it was looked much larger and angrier than a typical coyote. I think this thing came from the nearby creek where there are a lot of deer that like to congregate and drink water. Initially, I first saw it when I was back there exploring, thinking about all the creepy Silent Hill-esque things that happen in these part of the woods with the abandoned stands in them. I heard a bunch of commotion coming from the direction where the creek is. So, I was curious and went a little further to investigate. That's when I saw it for the first time. This massive coyote looking creature attacking and killing this deer as it was drinking at the creek. I was stunned at what I was seeing. Not even more than a few seconds of staring at this monster. I could hear it making this clicking noise as it was chomping down on this dead deer. It had probably been there for maybe 20 seconds. Then it stopped. I was frozen in complete and utter panic and thought it was going to kill me next. But it slowly looked up at me. I heard it let out this nasty, god-awful growl. I turned and ran as fast as I could to get up out of there. It was almost as if this thing had read my mind and my thoughts. Judging by its expression alone, I just remember thinking, Werewolf! It was so tall and intimidating looking. 
I didn't know what to make of it at first, but then I realized, if I don't leave now, I'm going to be its next meal. God, it really did resemble a large upright walking coyote. Very shaggy and matted fur. It was so huge and a gray white color, but off white with a long snout. It was wet too, looking like it just crawled out of the creek and attacked this poor doe. The whole experience has left me freaked out so much that I don't go back there exploring anymore, at least like I used to. Then afterward, I started to really think critically, and maybe there's a reason people don't hunt back there anymore. I don't know. There are many areas with abandoned tree stands, but I can't accurately describe to you the feeling that that part of the woods gives you. It really just makes my skin crawl being back there. And then I go and see that coyote thing, and that just sealed the deal for me. Do I think there's a large werewolf type creature ravaging the lands back there? Not quite. Do I think there's a large unknown predator that looks and resembles a werewolf back there that I want to avoid completely? Yes. Years and years ago, I volunteered to do some local force service work when one day, I was 17 or 18 years old at the time, I was asked to clear some thicker brush in this remote area for trail development. Because we had so little volunteers, I was the only one working this shift this day. I was by myself entirely. Because of my youth, I was very arrogant and sure of myself and my surroundings. How wrong I was. I hadn't even been clearing the brush for more than an hour when I started to see the tops of these large ears in the trees near me. These massive pointed ears that were bigger than any ears I'd ever seen. Then, whatever it was looked up at me through and behind the trees. I just saw these glowing yellow eyes looking back at me. From where I was standing, whatever I was looking at appeared to be well over six feet tall. The eyes were almost hypnotic. It was almost like you got sucked into them. They pierced into my soul. I felt as if the energy from the eyes hit me, and I felt a pull to run towards them. Like I was being lured away from my task to come towards whatever these eyes were attached to. I felt like I was in a trance, being controlled like a puppet to a puppeteer. I found myself almost beginning to walk towards them and not realize it before I snapped out of it and turned away. In that moment, I felt the gripping trance on me had faded and just felt total fear. So much so that I was too afraid to move. I regained control and turned and ran as fast as I could to go tell my supervisor what was going on. I ran back to the main part of the trail, which in the area I was in was a dead end, when I began hearing something really big following close behind me. I stopped dead in my tracks and listened. That's when I heard a howl yell sound. It was powerful enough that I actually felt it, as if I was made of metal, and if I moved, I would have been destroyed. It felt very close, and I could feel the presence of something approaching me from behind. I turned around to see what it was, and there, just having stepped out of the woods behind me, stood a monstrosity of a being. It was taller than a man, had a larger head than I imagined, and the most evil looking eyes. It was the same creature that tried to lure me away, and it didn't look remotely happy that I broke away, broke free from its trance. It followed me up this trail and just looked so angry, so angry that I didn't come to it. It had long upright ears, just like what I saw initially behind the trees hands with long claws, and a face almost like a wolf, but uglier, if that makes any sense. I knew I was now fully seeing this thing in the flesh, whatever it was that was masked behind the trees trying to pull me in. This was the creature. It stood there, looking me up, sizing me up, eyes scanning my body up and down, as if waiting for me to make the next move, when this thing takes a step towards me. And just in that very moment, I hear the sound of somebody coming towards me. 
my supervisor in a golf cart. She was coming down the trail and headed this way, just around the bend. This thing turns its immediate attention to the sound of the golf cart and then turns and looks back at me, looks back again at the approaching sound, and then in a split second darts back into the woodline on the other side of the trail, creating a massive crashing sound. I pretty much soiled my pants, and not even 10 seconds later, my supervisor pops into view. She had this surprised look on her face to see me on this part of the trail, and even stopped to ask me what I was doing here, and why I wasn't down on the other part, finishing clearing the brush. I didn't say much, but I told her I think I needed to leave, and wasn't feeling well. I could tell she wasn't buying it, but she kept telling me, Are you sure? You do look really pale. Are you sick? Safe to say that I left and never volunteered for wildlife services ever again after that. One night, when I was around 10 years old, my dad came home late, about 11 p.m. at night. My mother, who had fallen asleep, was lying on the couch and waiting for him to get home. My dad, upon walking up to the house, noticed something looking at him by the side door of the house and the side window. When he turned on the light on the front porch, it quickly moved out of view. I shouldn't say turned on, really. We have a motion light detector on the front porch, so when he stepped into view, this thing must have moved from the light. My dad, being on high alert, thinking it was an intruder coming into the house, and before he could say anything, my sister comes running down the hallway, white as a ghost, and said, Dad, Mom, there's a large monster outside my window. Her bedroom window is on the far side of the house, right where the thing supposedly was. That is exactly where my dad saw it. My dad told us he was getting his rifle and grabbed it out of the closet. He opened up the back door and walked out into the darkness and screamed and fired off a shot into the sky, demanding whatever this was to show itself or he was going to make it look like Swiss cheese. Incredibly corny, but my father gets this superhero complex about him sometimes, where I feel like he has to recite cheesy action movie lines just to quelch his fear. He shined his flashlight around, but couldn't see anything. My sister, my mom, and I were all on high alert, freaking out. My sister and dad genuinely saw something. While my dad was outside, investigating the back, we heard something moving around the front yard. My mother somehow had the courage to look out in the window, and we saw it was not a person, but a large wolf-like creature that was staring right back at us through the window with these dirty, ambery, yellow eyes. It looked emaciated and lifeless, sunken in face and very slender, like it hadn't eaten in days. It looked kind of deformed and broken, but it didn't look like it was in any pain. My sister and I began to scream, and my mother rushed to the back to yell for my dad, saying it was in the front of the house. My dad comes rushing back into the house, all the way to the front of the house, and the damn thing is gone again. My sister and I ran and hid in my parents' room, with a giant comforter underneath it, just like little kids. It was horrifying. My mom was freaking, and my dad probably spent the better half of the next two hours patrolling the entire perimeter of the outside of our house, searching for this creature, shining his flashlight at any given moment pointing his gun. After a while, he gave up because we hadn't seen it anymore, and he went inside but kept the gun close by, just in case that it came back. He and my mom hardly slept, but they did sleep in the living room, or tried to. My sister and I fell asleep at some point, holding each other under the comforter. The following morning, and the time after, we just didn't talk about it, and I've never brought it back up as a family. My sister, however, kept asking my dad the next day, What was that last night, Dad? What did we see? What kind of monster was that? Where did it come from? My father refused to answer. My mom just kept changing the subject and suggested that we shouldn't discuss such things. We never had an experience like that ever, and we moved out about a year later. 
It's a scary memory to think back on, actually. Shortly after I had turned 21, I believe I saw a dog man. After a long weekend of partying with some friends outside of Cincinnati, I don't remember the exact location, but it was along the highway near me and probably right along the railroad tracks adjacent to it. It was on all fours, looking over at me, and then it stopped in its tracks. It seemed like it was looking directly into my eyes, but there was this overwhelming feeling when it looked at me, a fear that took hold of me. I couldn't break away from its gaze. It really did look grotesque looking. After about a few more seconds of looking at it, I determined that this was a creature of sinister intention, a dog man. It was very humanoid looking in the face. I had to slow down to observe this thing as it stared back at me, like we were meant to make eye contact. Then I sped up, and this thing gave chase after my car. I was scared that it would catch up to me and pull me out of my vehicle, so I pressed on the gas hard until I was doing around 80 to 90 miles an hour with this thing running behind me, nearly catching up with me. Then it just stops in the middle of the road, stands up on two legs, and then watches me as my car gets further and further away, creating more and more distance from this thing. I watched this all happen in my rearview mirror. Honestly, one of the freakiest things I've ever had happen to me in my entire life. I didn't know creatures like this even existed until I learned about Dogman later on in life. It's left a lasting impression on me. When friends joke about folklore and Bigfoot, I can't help but know now that there are things out there that do exist that society somehow deems as non-existent. Whenever I see creatures in the movies now, I kind of want to believe they exist, just like werewolves or dogmen. Call it whatever you want. Even with the faintest hint of a connection, I can't shake the feeling that this thing was trying to kill me. I was so scared that I still have this memory constantly. I've just accepted that it's a part of me now. Earlier this winter, I shot at one of these dogman creatures with my 22 rifle. Probably an incredibly stupid idea, and I almost got myself killed. These dogmen are scary looking, with tall ears, huge heads, and huge sets of teeth. The one I shot at was easily 8 feet tall. I shot at one of its ribs and fired another shot at its shoulders to try and deter it away from getting into my trailer. They looked like they could cut me wide open if they wanted to. I didn't care though. I wanted to get it away from my trailer. I knew a measly hollow point wasn't going to do anything to this thing, but it did seem to deter it for the time being. The next few days, I felt like I was being watched and followed everywhere I went around the outside of my trailer. This one dogman in particular, the one I believed to be the alpha male of a pack, he was hunting me. He was large and black, the same one I had shot at that seemed to keep trying to come back behind the house. It was very muscular, broad, and honestly resembled a living killing machine. I shot at him with my 22 again, but it didn't seem to do anything to him. It wasn't even remotely bothered that I shot bullets into it. It's like the bullets didn't even do any damage. It kept its pursuit, and I hid inside my trailer for the evening. I knew it was waiting outside for me, but I never gave it the satisfaction of going outside to greet it. The following day, I started to hear strange noises and activity around my trailer. The dogs all throughout my property started to go crazy regularly that day. I could hear them trotting back and forth between my trailer and the thick woods. They had been acting strange the whole day when they were not acting strange the few nights before. Whenever these creatures were around, they knew. Oh yes, they knew. They could smell it. And these things gave off this awful scent like blood and dog. But it's worse than that. It's rotten. I can't even describe it to you. The entire day I was on edge, waiting for this thing to show itself again, as it had been. I knew it was going to. 
you just had this feeling in the pit of your stomach, this anxiety that something is going to happen. You just don't know when. Imagine being tied up and blindfolded and know somebody's going to just stab you, but you never know when. I know, weird analogy, but that's the best I can come up with. I don't know why it was so headstrong on trying to break into my trailer, but it wouldn't stop. I clearly couldn't hurt this thing with the measly 22 that I had, but it was the only weapon I owned that could somewhat deter this animal and make it stop. So, I lied in wait most of the time waiting for it to show itself again. Maybe if I shot it in the eye or something like that, it would go away. Sometimes it would be sneaky and work its way right up to my trailer by crouching. Other times it would just do a bluff charge and then disappear. This creature really liked to show itself at night, so I light again and wait because I know it would be more active then. This is the night where things really took off. I remember it, it was starting to get dark and I began hearing a strange noise that I had not heard before outside. The moon was bright enough that I could see. It was actually a full moon, which in and of itself was eerie, considering what I was dealing with and the situation at hand. I had my 22 with me, fully loaded and ready to go. Maybe I could shoot this thing in the face and get it to go away once and for all, but I wasn't too hopeful. My dogs were quiet, which was a good sign, because they've always gotten kind of anxious any time these things are in the area. So I walked outside to see if I could see what was making the noise I was hearing. That's when I realized I walked right into the middle of a damn trap. And then I saw a pair of eyes that were staring right back at me. That's when the situation that I was in turned from mild to absolute horror. Then I began seeing multiple sets of eyes all around me and all around the trailer. There had to have been at least 12 of them, and as my eyes began to adjust, I could see more coming. All of my dogs were dead and were being feasted upon by these creatures. That's why they hadn't made a sound. I just dropped my gun right there and ran back into the trailer and locked the door. There was no way that crappy little gun was going to do anything against a horde of these things. I started to have a panic attack, not knowing what to do or what I was going to do to face these things. Then these things started getting rowdy. I heard growling, howling. They started charging into the trailer, knocking me off my feet, scratching on the windows and the siding. They were just toying with me at this point, like a sadistic monster. These creatures were easily strong and large enough that they could break in if they wanted to. It's like I was an injured or poisoned mouse with a bunch of cats playing with me right before they were going to eat me. I was sure that this was the end of it, that I was going to be eaten alive and torn into pieces by large werewolf looking creatures. But something bizarre happened. About 20-30 minutes goes by and the commotion stops. Everything outside was silent. I didn't even hear the crickets. It was just dead. I stayed inside my trailer the rest of the night and I did not get a drop of sleep. I wasn't sure if they were baiting me, waiting for me to step out, giving me a false sense of security while waiting for me. I wasn't going to step out into that trap though, not like I did the first time. I'm pretty sure they were baiting me and trapping me. I knew the second I would have stepped foot outside that trailer, they would have grabbed me and bam, I would have been gone. So I sat in that trailer for what felt like an entire month, even though it had only been 9 hours. As soon as the daylight began to break, I got outside, stepped out, and to my horror, there were no dog carcasses like I thought there were going to be, just torn chains where I had them, and blood everywhere. It was like a slaughterhouse. I had about eight dogs that I kept around me to keep safe. They were all gone. Some might call this next move drastic, but I felt like I was in a dire situation of life or death and so I just stopped and abandoned everything I owned in that trailer and hitchhiked to an entirely different state and remained homeless for a while. Sure, I took my wallet, my identity, you know, important information like that, but I said screw it 
and left what little belongings I had in that trailer to rot with those monsters. That was just this winter, and I hope to stay far away from anything like those things again. Alright, look, I'm already extremely paranoid just listening to your channel as it is, let alone submitting what I want to send to you. Because of that, I don't want to give away the exact location in which this is happening, but I will say the state of Mississippi is in dire need of help. Over the last several years, people have been being found mauled to death or just turned up missing entirely when they were last seen around a heavily wooded area. I think you know where this is going, and what I have to say is that I'm pretty sure there is a large cover-up going on. I'm more than sure that you are aware of this from all the encounters you probably receive, but it's getting worse. Sure, how do I know this? Because a couple of the people that have been killed so far have been family of mine. Because the only thing I've been told so far is that it is an unidentifiable canine animal. Well, let me tell you something right now. There is no ravenous wolf just running around killing and eating people. Not the size of a damn moose. The police know well what's going on, and they're choosing to keep it under wraps. I don't know anything about proper protocol or what they do and how they keep it under control, but they're doing it, and people are being left in the dark purposefully. People need to be warned about this kind of thing. They need to know that these creatures exist and that they are out there. It's not safe to go into the woods alone anymore. Just a few months ago, shortly after quarantine set in, there was an older gentleman who lives near right by me. He went fishing at a pond who somehow vanished. All they found was his fishing pole and his fishing vest that was bloody and torn up. Ready? They found it about a mile and a half away from the pond towards the thicker wilderness. You tell me what happened there. He would have no reason to go further into the woods, which only leads to more national forest. I'm telling you, there is some huge conspiracy at hand here, and I don't know exactly what it is or why they're trying to cover this whole dogman thing, but it's been really bothering me lately, and I feel that it's my place to speak out. I hope you decide to read this to your listeners, because I want them to know that it's getting worse. They need to be vigilant and hypersensitive to their surroundings around them if they choose to be out in the woods. We need to stop this nonsense of writing Dogman off as fake creepypasta crap. People are out here dying and getting mauled to death by these things because the general public refuses to accept the truth. As far as Bigfoot goes, I don't know anything about that and I don't have any personal experience with Bigfoot. From everything I've learned cryptozoology wise, they are much more docile and gentle beings. But that's besides the point. You wouldn't be hearing about a large unknown predator eating people if it was Bigfoot out there doing this. And I don't know if you know this, but Mississippi is kind of a hotbed for these creatures. If you've ever heard of the town of Taylor, Mississippi, well, they are plagued by these creatures. They call it the Rougarou down here, but I know it's also known as a dogman. I stand firm in my knowledge of cryptozoology and what these creatures are, and I know they are out there. You will never find me out there in the woods alone, because I don't trust that a pistol, a magnum, a machine gun will be enough to stop these things from killing you. I don't know if they are born or put together by the government, or natural or supernatural. I don't care. All I know is that they are killing people, and something has to be done to stop them. The police and government are working together to make sure this happens, and that any word gets out is hush-hush. Before I end this, I don't want this to just to be a rant. I need to go into more detail about my two family members that were murdered. They were found partially eaten, and what the police report described was a large canine. Excuse me, a known large canine. Now. You tell me what you think, knowing all that you do with all of the encounters and stories you get sent. Please, I'm begging you. I want you to read this to your viewers. People need to know this is going on, and it's severe. I'm hurting, and I'm trying to mourn right now for the loss of my family, 
because these damn things are not being taken care of the way they need to be. Pray for me. Listen to me. Take warning. If you're going to go out there in the woods at all, whether you are exploring or indulging in recreational activities, you need to be heavily armed to the teeth and watching your back at any given moment. From what I know, these things are highly advanced predators. They are masters of camouflage, incredibly intelligent, and if you think you can outsmart them because they are a quote-unquote animal, well, you're highly mistaken. Anyway, thank you for taking the time to read this.